Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday morning service. We're so grateful that you're here. We have a great service today. We're going to start by singing our opening chant, We Are the Harvest, written by Jamie Lula. <laughs> We are the harvest we reap. 
Good morning. good morning. So good to see all of you who are gathered here in person and welcome to all of you who are joining us via Facebook Live and Zoom for our Sunday morning service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. Uh, for those of you who are here in person, if you could just make sure that if you have a cell phone or anything that might make noise during the service that it's silenced at this time, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. So, with that, I invite you to please join me in prayer. So we take this moment to turn our attention inward and to just allow ourselves to sense the truth beyond our physical senses, the truth that we are all one one in the one life, the one power, the one all goodness, all lovingness, infinite intelligence and creativity that is God. I know that all creation comes out of that impulse of God to experience and express itself in this time and space dimension. And so I know that each of us exists as an emanation of God, surrounded and filled by God's nature. And that part of that nature is the freedom to discover the truth of who we are as divine beings for ourselves. And I know that as we come together this morning, this service absolutely supports that awakening to the truth of our divine essence so we can experience it more fully in our lives. I know we feel the vibration of God's love as we come together as a spiritual community in person and virtually. I know we are touched and uplifted by that love flowing through each and every person who is of service this morning, that we are absolutely uplifted by our music ministry, by Sam and Karen and our soloist, Melissa, and I know that the perfect word of the divine is spoken through Dr. Mark, that the message he delivers us this morning is that which we need to hear to have that awakening experience. And so I give thanks for every blessing that we receive in this time, knowing that great healing and revealing is occurring. And in gratitude, I release this word, absolutely knowing this time is blessed, and so it is. And together we say, Amen. I am part of the great mind of God, and God is all that I am. God is love. And so please rise and join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So now let's join in our congregational hymn, Make a Joyful Noise. Okay, so we are going to take the next five minutes to just get still and meditate together. So I invite you to just get still in your bodies, in your seats. Just allow yourself to settle into the moment. Close your eyes. And for the next five, five minutes, I invite you to silently repeat the mantra, God is the love that I am. God is the love that I am. Just silently repeat that over and over, and I'll bring us out of meditation in five minutes.
We believe in things we cannot see. Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? Hands and heel can set a chain man free. Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? And we believe there is peace within every heart. Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? Burning brightly, brightly in the dark. Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? So come on, darling, feel your spirits rise. Come on, children, open up your eyes. God is all around. Buddha's at the gate. Allah hears your prayer. It's, it's not too Celebrate your vote Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? And we believe in things And make us all the same Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? Love belongs to all those In deed and in name Why shouldn't we? Why shouldn't we? So come on, darling, feel your spirits rise. Come on, children, open up your eyes. God is all around, Buddha's at the gate. Allah hears your prayer, it's, it's not too Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to church. I'm so happy that you are here. And our newest baby is here. Miles Emmett is here with us as well. So that always thrills me. You've got to get them when they're young, you know? Uh, so, you know, Einstein said that E equals MC squared. And basically what he's saying there is that everything is energy, right? And so that, that fits very much with the science of mind. Saying everything is energy is very similar to saying Everything is God, because God is that energy. So if we are made in the image and likeness of God, and that's what the scriptures tell us, so I believe that that's true, but we are made in the image and likeness of God, so that means that what's true about God is true about us. And what I'm thinking of here are that those qualities, those spiritual verities that we talk about all the time, like love and peace and joy and abundance and creativity and wholeness, we believe that those things are already inherent. They're part of who we are. So I think also that each and every one of us, we are the delight of God. There was a woman in the complex that I live in the other day, and I was walking my dog, and, and, uh, and I talked to this woman. I see her every day. I think my dog is actually her guru. And um, 
she, she's just in love with my dog. And so she was uh, feeling very, very low. And, um, and I, I told her that thing I say to us all the time. I said, you know, God thinks very highly of you. So it, it's really doesn't do you, you know, why would you think less of yourself than God thinks of you? And she said, you think God thinks highly of me? I said, look, I have it on very good authority that God thinks so highly of you that he has your picture on the fridge. And she just loved that. She loved that. She's told that to everybody in the complex now, and I'm, now I'm trying to avoid everybody. Um, <laughs> you know, I think over the course of my life, um, and probably true for all of us, you know that uh, it does not matter what's been said or the names we've been called or the inaccurate things people have said about us. Today, I, we recognize, you know, that who we are is a child of God. We are the love of God personified. You know, we are the love of the universe. And yes, absolutely, we are spiritual beings. And that means that that, that spirit within us is, is radiant and it's dynamic. And, and, and I love that, you know. So Jesus said, ye are the light of the world, the light that lighteth up every man and woman that comes into the world. So, you know, in quantum physics, and I am not the most sciencey guy, but I, I, I make a little effort in that way to understand, but quantum physics says that we are fields of vibration, uh, and those fields of vibration are of infinite possibility. So that's very much like science of mind. So th that feels really like a good fit to me. So the universe, quantum physics says, is actually made up of bursts of light. Okay, so the universe is not as solid as we have thought it was. So it's the light that's breaking into expression. And so I think we are available for, for great things. You know, because we are working with the mind of God, we are available for divine revelations. We're available for healing. We're available for insight. We're available for understanding. Um, even, even miracles. Why not? Why not? We're, we are not what has happened to us, you know? I so often talk with people and they feel so identified with the experiences they have had in life that they think that those experiences that they have had actually define who they are. But you as a spiritual being are so big, nothing could actually define all of who you are as spirit. You know, so we're not the stuff that's happened to us. And yeah, stuff has happened, hasn't it? I mean, lots of stuff in the course of a lifetime has happened to every one of us. But if we come back to this, that who we are is that we are spiritual beings made in the image and likeness of God. And another way to say that that's a little more scientific is that we are a field of infinite possibilities. You know? Now, Scripture also says that if thine eye be single, thy body will be filled with light. And to me, this means if I focus on God, if I put my relationship with God, with the Spirit first, then everything else gets taken care of. See, because God is that first and primary relationship for me, I know that that consciousness, that vibration, is what goes into every cell of my body, into every cell of my being. You know, if we could see spiritually, rather than just with physical eyes, I believe that we would see something that's so different. See, spiritually, by seeing spiritually, I mean see with more of our heart than with our brain. Uh, seeing more with our intuition rather than my good ideas, and I do have a lot of good ideas, you know. We, I see, we will be fulfilled, you know, with the light of that truth, you know? uh, because that is really our true identity. See, up until now, I think the world of appearances hypnotizes us again and again and again. And what I mean by that is the world of appearances says, hey, watch out for this. Hey, this is real. Hey, this is a problem. This is a power. We're always being told by the outside world that things outside of us have dominion over us, that they are a power over us, that they decide whether we get to be happy, prosperous, free, loved, on and on and on. You know, but telling us that this hypnotism that's always at us, telling us that it's... Um, our job, we have to keep score. You know, we have to judge ourselves. We have to be judging other people. We have to be looking for validation. We've got to find this elusive love, on and on and on. But Ernest Holmes, in The Science of Mind, says God is the first cause. Not people out here, not things, not jobs, not any of that stuff. God is the first cause. The first cause. And ultimately, God is actually the only cause, if we sort of go big picture enough, because it's all God. All we see 
is a manifestation of thought. That's what we see on the face of the earth. So our thought is either in alignment, in harmony with the nature of God, the nature of love, the universe that we live in, or our thought is an error belief. You know, act, now, if your thought is an error belief, because there is spiritual law in place, that will be acting as a law in your life. The error belief acts as law. Now, yes, God is all, and I'm in tune with it, or I'm believing in the error. And this is for us every moment of the day. I'm either in tune with the infinite, I'm knowing my oneness with God, that God is all, that God is love, that God is power, that God is now right here, or I'm caught up in the appearance. I'm believing the appearance. And you know, no good ever comes from believing in that appearance. A lie believed, if we believe a lie, that is just going to act as law until we go in and intentionally neutralize that ourselves. You know, we are not all the things that have happened to us, thank God, you know? And yet, so many people I know carry those things that they have been through, that have happened to them, that people have said to them. They carry those events, those stories, the he done me wrongs. That's not who we are. Each of us, we are a consciousness an individualized consciousness of God. And maybe another way to say that is that we are a field of vibration, we are like a frequency, and each of us, our frequency is a little different. We are a field of infinite possibilities. So this means the potential is already right here. We don't have to go looking for that potential. Isn't that wonderful? I think that's really good news. So if we keep our eye single, we get to call it forth. I focus on God, and I know that God intends only good for me. That's what I have to remember every day. You know, focus on God, and I know God intends only good for me. Everything else is pretty much window dressing as far as I'm concerned. So this means the, the, if the potential is already here, right, we're not adding something to us. We see a possibility, and we call it forth, because what's true in the mind of God is true for me. So in the mind of God, there is love. That means love is true for me. In the mind of God, there is peace, there's harmony, there's abundance. There are all those wonderful things. You know, every time we treat, every time we pray, every time we affirm, we every time we come together in spiritual community, we are lifting our personal consciousness. We're lifting our personal vibration and frequency. And I think the good of God that is happening everywhere gets to happen now right where I am, right where you are. See, if we lift our personal vibration, and the way we do that, of course, is through practice again and again and again and again. And I will tell you that after years of working with the science of mind, I see some increments of progress in myself, but just increments, I will tell you. And, and where I am always, always humbled somehow is when I get in the car. It's, it's just a magical thing. I can think I'm just as spiritual as can be, and I am ready to ascend, and all I need to do is back out of my garage, and, um, and it changes. So all that shows me is I have more work to do, and I believe that's true. I believe that as long as we're on the face of the earth, we have, we have work to do. And I know people often say to me, older people will often say to me, well, I don't know why I'm still here. And I say, oh, I know why you're here. And they say, and they, really, why? And I say, because God has kept you here to pray for me. I need a lot of help. I really do, I really do. So you know, I think it's not a coincidence that as we get older, we slow down because I believe the universe wants us to cultivate that spirit within, you know, to cultivate our mind. You know, when, um, when I lift the vibration of my being from, from meditating and treating and affirming, I'm not so much seeking materially as I'm, I'm not trying to get something out here, I'm trying to experience something in here. If I don't lift my frequency, I'm going to remain at the level of manipulation, right? Of just manipulating the effects out here. And so just trying to get an improved humanhood. Now, I think an improved humanhood is better than an unimproved humanhood, <laughs> right? But, but to just improve my human experience is actually limiting because we're spiritual beings. My life will never get really better by just learning to manipulate things out here. You know, people, places, things, all of that, right? I, now, in all honesty, I will tell you, I've done it. 
Yeah, I, I, I have done it well. I have learned how to do that. It, it, it absolutely works, but it's not ultimately fulfilling. It's not really the purpose of what we're after. You know, uh, to, to just manipulate effects is, is a little off. Because there's so much more, I think, to our spiritual journey than just to manipulate the law. When we raise our personal frequency, you know, we know that we are here for something greater. We are here to glorify God. And we say, well, how do I do that? And say, by, by, by your life working well, by you being the best version of yourself, that's what glorifies God. Yes, and by being of service and through your daily spiritual practice, but I would encourage each of us to make a decision to be your real self. You know, we've tried being all the other variations of ourself, haven't we? So what if we actually showed up as the real us and said, this is it, this is me. You know, nothing outside of us is the power. Nothing, and what I mean by that is that nothing outside of us determines the character of who we are. When I used to lead trips to Brazil, um, we became very friendly with a man there who was a martial arts instructor in the village that we would visit. And, uh, and now, of course, where we were visiting, it, it, was, it was very, very poor there. And so this guy, I, I think he was actually a living saint. I really do, because his mission was to teach karate to children. And, but he would say, I don't teach kids how to fight. He said, I'm building character. He said, because you know, in a poor village like this, in a poor country, he says, it's just a matter of time. Somebody's going to come and offer these kids drugs. He says, but I believe that if they have character, the character they will learn through practicing martial arts, when somebody comes and tries to offer them drugs, he says, they will be able to say and stand strong in themselves, no thanks, I'm not interested in that. I do karate. And so he had. Uh, Every time I'd been there to, to see his martial arts studio, he had probably about 30 or 35 kids. And, um, and what was so amazing to me, um, I learned through, through a translator, is that most of these families were not able to afford to pay him. But he was so committed to these kids. In fact, the last time I was there, he told me that he now drives around the village and picks up foster children because he's realized that they are at the most high risk for uh, people, uh, for uh, drug dealers to corrupt them. So he's really trying to get these kids in to do, to do this martial arts thing. I just thought that was just the most extraordinary thing. He said, you know, I'm not teaching kids to fight. I'm building character. I'm building character, you know? And so we teach, and Ernest Holmes said, and I've always loved this, that there is only one life, and he says, this life is God. This life that is God is my life now. Right? So we are one with that life that is God. So my prayer is to eliminate whatever it is in my subjective mind, you know, the place in me where I have allowed life experiences and events of the past and uh, perceptions I've had and things that people have said to harden into troubles. Because, you know, if we don't release that stuff, I think that we will kind of chew on it and chew on it, kind of like a dog with a bone. And ultimately, that will show up in our life in some physical form you know, as a limited idea of who and what we are. So Jesus said, it, it, it doesn't do a lot for each of us to just pray for those people we love. And don't we love to pray for the people we love? I get such a warm, fuzzy feeling when I call to mind my parents and my grandparents and my aunts and uncles and, oh my God, my, my siblings, my great nieces and nephews. You know, that is so, oh, it's so yummy, isn't it? It's so good. And then there's the rest of them. Right? Yeah, no, honestly, you know, then there's everybody else who's crossed my path that I think I have to have an opinion about, or I've done, sort of forgiven, but not completely forgiven, and on and on and on. Now, I understand from studying this teaching that if I don't clear that stuff out of my consciousness in a healthy way, it's just going to rattle around in there, and eventually it'll probably show up as some physical manifestation, I think, for me. So the point is, you've got to pray for whoever you might think the enemy is to grow spiritually. That's where the spiritual growth is. I want to tell a, goldsmith, a story about Joel Goldsmith. I remember uh, reading about him that he was drafted into the war, and he wondered how spiritually he could fight in the war because if we are all one, that seemed like a huge contradiction to him. And so 
He kept knowing his oneness with God and that in the mind of God there was no enemy. And he said through just extraordinary circumstances, he went through the entire war and never had to shoot a gun. It was just amazing. And he said he was in places and positions where that normally would have happened, he said, but it just never happened for him because I believe he's telling us that his consciousness was so filled with spiritual truth that there was no room for anything unlike that. So I have to pray for all those people, those talking heads that I have an opinion about when I see them on TV because this is why. They are showing me something, probably, okay, definitely, about myself that I don't want to see. You know, so we often say that people show up as mirrors in our life, so I have to bless those mirrors in my life for what they show me, and what they show me is what I have not yet healed in myself. They're showing me some little belief, some component of unconsciousness that I'm still holding on to. So I have to be willing to see God in the people I thought were the exception to the rule, is what I'm saying. Because, <laughs> you know, I know it's all God except for this little list of people I have over here. They're the ones that God wasn't paying attention that day, and they kind of slipped through or something. See, if everyone is made in the image and likeness of God, and I believe we are, when there is nothing in me that resonates um, with them what happens is they stop doing whatever it is they were doing that was annoying me. Isn't that funny? You know, there's nothing in me that, that resonates with that. Like, there's, there's no, I don't have any matching frequency to them. You know, praised or criticized, you know who you are, right? There's no power outside of God. So why don't we just commit? For this week, we just do it for this week alone. Okay, and if it didn't work for you, if it doesn't work for you next week, you can go back to just praying for the people you like, okay? But for this week, for this week, why don't we pray for the people who we believe, well, they represent a power outside of us. They show us something about ourselves that we don't love. Maybe people who you feel, um, who've made you feel bad, or somebody who's made you feel small, or somebody who told you you were not enough, or people who disturb you or intimidate you, or anything like that. Because if you will pray for them consistently, you will be set free. And the wonderful thing about being set free is in that space of freedom where we've had a healing, God can always bring some newness. You know, So when we heal something, it's like, oh, now there's a vacancy. And God will rush in to fill that vacancy. Right? The kingdom of God is within us. That's what we want to bring into our heart, that awareness. The kingdom of God is within me. And so not only do I desire the best for me, for you, but I desire the best for everybody. See, I think God is big enough that everybody can have the best experience of life. If we're envious or jealous of someone, you know what they're doing? They're just holding a mirror in front of me so I can see my belief that I'm not enough. That's why I'm jealous. That's why I would be envious. That's not the truth of me as a spiritual being. It's certainly not the truth of you as a spiritual being. So what do I have to do? I have to pray for them that person I feel envious or jealous of. I have to see that God is shining through them. And I mean, when I say pray for them, I mean pray sincerely. Not one of those like, all right, I'll say the Lord's Prayer for them. Our Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. You know, not like that. I mean like a real sincere, heartfelt prayer. Because that's what we have to do if we want to get free. You know, it's, it, it's really the golden rule. And that golden rule shows up in every tradition practically. And that certainly means praying for your enemies. You know, I remember years ago hearing someone talk about Buddha, and they said, Buddha said, bless your enemies, for they allow you to grow. And when I first heard that, it was like one of those things where I was just like, oh my god, that made me crazy. You know, bless my enemy, that's the last person I want to bless. And then, as consciousness started to evolve, it started to make sense to me. It's like, ah, oh, that's where the growth is. Oh, that's where the growth is. Because the truth is, we only get to keep what we give away. Right? So I have to give that blessing and that love and that enlightenment to anybody and everybody out there. I got to say, you know, it's, it seems a little backwards for us to think that governments can do what people can't. It has to start with people. You know, with our individual consciousnesses rising up and, and showing up in the world as, as who we really deep down know ourselves to be. You know, we raise our vibration. We're healed, and our world changes as we change. You know, God's qualities, 
that love and joy and peace, those are the vibration of the Most High God. And I think that's what we want to be bringing forward in our life all the time. So let's turn within for a moment now, taking our attention toward our breath for a moment. Notice the in-breath and out-breath, breathing in, breathing out, because it's really at the point of our breath where the highest God and the innermost God become one God. There is a divine vibration seeking its expression through each of us, as each of us. And the instrument of this divine vibration is our mind. Today I believe in the divine presence, power, and principle within me, within each of us, and I believe this vibration is right where we are. I understand that the good of God, the power of God, the love of God flows through me now, through each of us, always. Today I accept this presence within me, and today I believe that this power is operating in all of my life's affairs. I acknowledge that this presence instructs us in every area of life. I deliberately turn away from everything and everyone that denies the reality of the divine presence in me, as me, and through me. Today I know that every atom, every cell, every action, organ, and function of my being is brought into divine health and harmony. It can be no other way. Today I know every shadow of doubt, worry, and fear is completely dispelled. I am quickened with the divine presence of the living spirit in me. Today I am graced with the presence of this power. Today I know that we are blessed with the love, the joy, the good, the infinite good of God, that we are strong in the glory of this divine presence. And I claim for each and every one of us that we are instruments through which the divine presence is working. I affirm the spirit of the living God within each of us right now and that this spirit breathes new life into our being, into every aspect of our life. Nothing is untouched by the glory and the power and the love of God. I know for each of us that we are filled with good, we are filled with light, we are filled with faith, and filled with the truth of our being, which is enduring, dynamic, divine. So including in our prayer family members and friends, parents and children, all of those we hold near and dear, we affirm God's perfect healing presence right where they are, that there is an upliftment to their vibrational frequency as well. We let our prayer be a blessing in the world. So our consciousness is big enough today that we open our hearts and minds and allow our prayer to touch every person on the face of the earth. We bless our church, all churches everywhere, synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together. And so it's with an open, gracious, full heart that I say, thank you, God, this is the truth. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much.
Think of your fellow man, lend him a helping hand, put a little love in your heart. You see it's getting late, oh please don't hesitate, put a little love in your heart and the world will be a better place, yes this world will be a better place for you and me you just wait and see yeah another day goes by and still the children cry put a little love in your heart if you want the world to know we all let hatred grow put a little Thank you so much, Melissa. You can uh, get Melissa's music at melissalewis.net. Another soloist that I thank for making it easy to get to your website. <laughs> and let's show some love and appreciation for our wonderful Sam and Karen over here. <laughs> so, a couple of announcements here. Uh, for those of you watching us online, Donations over the phone can be made by calling the church office for about uh, 30 minutes, up to 30 minutes after service. We'll be there to take your call if you'd like to make a donation by credit or debit card. The number is 818-762-7566. Or you can go to our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give, and that takes you to our donation page where you can do a one-time donation or set up recurring donations if you'd like to do that. I like doing it that way. I just get a surprise thank you email from Terry every week. <laughs> I go like, oh, that's right. <laughs> In other ways, you could also text the word GIVE to area code 818-457-3419. And someone pointed out to me last week, you know, we can do that on our silenced cell phones from the sanctuary. <laughs> So it's another option even for folks here. And we ask you to just remember also that um, if you join Amazon Smile and select Our Church as a Charity, that every time you make a purchase, we get some of the proceeds. So uh, if you'd like to consider that, it's at no cost to you. We'd be very grateful. 
And for those of you here, we have two donation boxes in the foyer as you exit the sanctuary. Today, you'll be able to drop off your donations there. However you continue to support us, just know how grateful we all are. Prayer with a practitioner after service on Zoom, um, or if you're attending the service in person, we do have a couple of practitioners here. If you're interested in getting prayer, uh, just come forward at the end of service. And uh, we also have the option where you can sign up, put your name and number and best time to call, and we can have a practitioner call and pray with you afterwards. Uh, email uh, prayer if you're um, during the week. There's something you want us to know about. You want prayer support. Just email prayer at nhcrs.org or call the church office. And option four allows you to leave a voicemail message with your prayer request. And we check those every evening and uh, send those requests out to all of our practitioners so you'll be well supported in consciousness. Wednesday evening service. This coming Wednesday, August 4th, meditation starts at 6.50, service is at 7, both in person and on Zoom. And we invite you to join us this week for our special guest speaker, our very own practitioner, Joanne O'Brien. And I'll be joining her. And Joanne's topic is the grace of resilience. I'm coming for that one. <laughs> <laughs> The women's group is meeting in person today as well as on Zoom in the youth church. Uh, they're meeting at 1115 and all women are welcome. Celebration of life for our beloved congregant, Taryn McEwen. Uh, we'll be holding a celebration of life for Taryn on Saturday, August 14th at 4 p.m. here in the sanctuary and on Zoom as well. And for those of you who would like to join via Zoom, the link is available on our website. And of course, all of us are welcome. Taryn was just such a light in our community, and I know we all support her in the next dimension. Women, Food, and God Workshop with Reverend Nadine, who is right here today. <laughs> Wave to everyone, Rev. <laughs> yes, that'll be, uh, yeah. <laughs> That'll be uh, Saturday, August 21st from 10 a.m. to 12.30, lunch is included. You, um, and so you can sign up on our website for this wonderful workshop based on the book with the same name by Janine Roth. So that's uh, Women, Food, and God. So that's the book if you want to look for it. The cost for the workshop is $30, and the book is available on Amazon. Our youth church, also, yay, Reverend Nadine, our youth church is reopening on August 15th. Uh, we're so excited to welcome back our youth, ages 3 through 18, back to church. Uh, that'll begin that Sunday, August 15th, and we'll have the youth church open for the 945 service. Parents are, um, are welcome to sit with children younger than three years in the mommy, daddy, and room, uh, me room, which is all the way at the back there, where you have that class window. In-person attendance, of course, we continue to have people coming in person, as all of you are here, you know, uh, 9.45 a.m., and we will continue to live stream on Zoom and Facebook Live. So, um, but we love, love having you here. So thank you to those of you who are able to come and fill this sanctuary with that wonderful energy that Dr. Mark talked about today. Zoom virtual patio, that's uh, before and after our Wednesday and Sunday services. You can just join on Zoom to uh, visit with fellow congregants if you are unable yet to come in person. The men's group meets via Zoom every Sunday from 11 to 11.30, and all men are welcome to that. And our Zoom meditation is continuing uh, to uh, be carried out on uh, Mondays through Saturdays, 8 to 8.15. We're usually on there about 15 minutes before, so people can connect and then settle in and meditate together. For information about this and all events here at the church, you just go to nhcrs.org, where you can also sign up for our um, 
uh, weekly e-blasts and our monthly newsletters. And so with that, thank you again for being here in person and virtually. And let's rise and let's sing the peace song. <laughs> Please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you very much.